بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم پاکستان وی آر بیک ود کارپریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی بیسکلی وی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ایتھیکل لیڈرشپ اینڈ ٹوڈے وی گوئن ٹو ٹاک آن اے ویری امپارٹنٹ ایسپیکٹ آف ایتھیکل لیڈرشپ اینڈ دیٹ از ایتھیکل ڈسیزن میکنگ پروسیس ناؤ دیر ہیو بین مینی اسٹڈیز کنڈکٹیڈ بائی دا ٹاپ ریسرچ انسٹیٹیوشنز اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ آن لیڈرشپ اٹس ویریس ماڈلس اٹس ویریس پرسیپشنز انٹرپریٹیشنز اینڈ کانسیکوینسز ون ویری امپارٹنٹ اسٹڈی بیسکلی آئیڈینٹیفائڈ دا ڈفرنٹ points which are required in a leader and the one which came out on top is ethical time based decision making so uh, what we see is is that uh, it is very important to make timely decisions which should have its roots uh, in the core of ethical considerations and that is very important because if you tend to take a decision late then there are different implications just like a very famous saying which you must have heard of is that justice delayed is justice denied or justice hurried is also uh, justice buried. So again, uh, we see that uh, the decision making process has to be well thought out. It has to be uh, based upon uh, principles and ethical values. And most importantly, it should be done in time because you don't want things to uh, flow over and then your decision will not have uh, any meaning or impact on whatever was under consideration. Now, When we're talking about ethical decision making, then we look at evaluating and choosing amongst alternatives in a consistent ethical manner. It talks about ethical decisions necessary to perceive and eliminate unethical options and select the best uh, ethical alternative. Now, when we are talking about all of this, then the process of making ethical decisions requires three things, commitment, consciousness, and competency. So again, it first means that in commitment, one should not waver from the objective or from the process, one has to have self-commitment and also commitment to other stakeholders so that there is no ambiguity or any confusion. The second one is consciousness. You cannot take a decision uh, based upon being unconscious or being subconscious or of not looking at all of the different important alternatives and different issues and perspectives which are at stake. And that basically tends to connote consciousness. And then a very important aspect which we've been talking about uh, since the last session is that there has to be competency and that competency has to again uh, be dependent upon the various uh, courses or the various degrees that individual has basically undertaking and then based upon that multicultural approach and which basically tends to re reflect reflect diversity and inclusivity one can come out with better decisions and that is the most important aspect of ethical decision making the first thing that one should do is that the first analysis is critical because it defines the dilemma and frames it correctly to move in the right direction. Some initial analysis has to happen for leaders to truly understand where they need to bring in ethical principles. So again, it is very important that uh, not only the person who has to execute it, but more so uh, the top leadership should be aware of the issues of the circumstances of the expectations, needs and wants of the citizens uh, of a province or the citizens of Pakistan as a whole, and that is extremely important. Uh, leaders need to decide why an ethical decision needs to be made and the outcomes uh, that are desired for the decision. So again, uh, this to and fro of thinking, of creating more ideas, of assimilating all of them, and of making them as a coherent document, which would be accepted by the opposition, becomes extremely, extremely important. And one cannot uh, tend to compromise on this because it would then lead to the devastation of that particular institution or of uh, business either ways. So again, this is extremely important. It's important as step two to gather information, keeping your mind open, distinguishing facts from assumptions, consulting resources, and seek assistance. So again, this is very important, seeking assistance. One should not feel shy to seek assistance and one should go the extra mile to understand it. And also the other person should go the extra mile to teach all of those concepts so that there should be more clarity and one can give a better conducive examination. So all of these things are very important and they basically uh, accumulate from uh, step two uh, or the open-ended approach, which, are, which is related uh, to uh, the ethical uh, leadership and is extremely important. Leaders then need to work on developing a strategy using the resources and people around them, whether it be qualified co-workers, HR professionals, or policies and handbooks. And again, they need to gain clarity from other sources when creating a strategy to tackle the situation. So again, it is about strategy development. It is about doing things in the right way. It is about ensuring uh, that there is no hanky-panky or something in which 
someone else would be compromised it has to be fair it has to be compassionate it has to be uh, equitable and it has to be empathetic and that is the best way to move forward and to ensure that ethical leadership is practiced in the best possible way within the community or within the institution thank you so much